Mrs. Bear, what you doing? Hey, April Bear, we're going camping. What happened to your head, April Bear? Well, you know, those fourth grade girls were doing my makeup and we were eating and making paper mache and I got a little dirty. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's, we're going to go take the tent and go set it up on a little teddy bear's picnic in the woods. If you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise for every bear. Now where are we going to put our tent? There's the fire pit, there's the activity table, the water truck. But I think we need to be somewhere over here in the shade by Grandfather Bear. All right, well there's the tent and the sleeping bag and let's get ready to camp. Hey, Mrs. Bear, can I help you set up the tent? Sure, Black Bear. We're gonna set it up right here. Okay, let's set it up, Mrs. Bear. I can't wait. How Mrs. Bear, Mrs. Bear, I missed you. Oh, are we going camping? I can't wait to go camping. How fun camping. Wait, Grandfather Bear? Huh? What does he say, monkey? Grandfather Bear says that this isn't a good place to put the tent because it's too rough and you should put it over there on the grassy, softer spot. Oh, okay, monkey. Well, okay, Mrs. Bear, we should put it over on that soft spot. All right, well, let's put it the tent over there. We've got our um, fancy tent that we're going to lay out. The one's in the shade. And then on these hooks, we're going to take out our poles and string them through the tent. And what I love about this tent is you should be able to set it up in three minutes or less. So let's see if Miss Fire can do this in three minutes or less. I'll check that. Okay, so I've got my three poles laid out. I've got the tent laid out, and I'm going to put the poles, there's like um, these straps, so I'm going to put each pole through each strap. What do we do now, Mrs. Bayer? Okay, well, Black Bear, we need to put each pole into these little holes uh, right here. There's one pole. Where did the other pole go? I thought it went through the... Um, and then, oh, yeah, oh, and then this pole, grab it down there, okay, Black Bear? Okay, I'll grab it, Miss Fire. Okay, and then you're going to put the two poles in those two holes. Okay, and then we come over here and put... Pull this up and put them in the hole on the other side. And then I'll show you where the third pole goes. Mrs. Byer, what about this blue part? You forgot the blue part. Oh, 
Well, Monkey, you know what? That goes over the top, but if we leave it out, we can look at the stars tonight. So it's kind of like having a sky roof. We'll just use this if it rains. Well, I don't think it's going to rain today, Mrs. Byer. So we're going to use the tent and get to lay out under the stars and look at the moon. Sure, Monkey, you guys can sleep out in the tent tonight. Oh, have fun. I can't wait. Hey, Mrs. Byer, I'm so glad to see you. Hey, Sarah, I'm so glad to see you too and all the boys and girls. Look, everybody's in the tent. How exciting. So what are you doing today, Mrs. Byer? What are you doing? Well, Sarah, since it was the 4th of July, I've been thinking about firecrackers and camping. And so I thought we would read some of my favorite books because I live in Montana because I love to be in the woods and go camping. And so we've got a couple of great books here. Um, one's called A River Dream by one of my favorite authors, Alan Say. And we're going to do a little spell words and see if you can guess our surprise book we're going to read today. So, we're going to go through some of our letters. Uh, mm, Bears, can you read that with me? And then what happens when we put the I-N-G ending, ing, the ing ending, on the end we get camping, camping, let's go camping. And then I've got another couple of words ready for you out of our big letters. We've got our T, we've got our E. And I'm choosing this E that doesn't have the line on top because we're going to say eh. Eh. Tent. 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 And we're all sitting in the tent, boys and girls and bears. And then here's our last word we're going to sound out that kind of tells us the surprise at the end. I'm going to put all the letters there. And this time we're going to use the... <clears throat> oh no, we don't want that one, actually. We do want just this one. Okay. Ooh. And then we see this is A-E is what we call it. A-E. So we know it's going to say the long A sound. A. Ooh. A k lake. Ooh, a k lake. Because it has its helper. <gasps> hmm. So what do you think about our surprise, Andrew? Got any ideas what we're going to read about today? I think we're going to read about a lake, Mrs. Byer. <gasps> we are going to read about a lake. We're going to read Alan Say's book, The Lost Lake. One of my favorite books from when I was a kid. I love all of Alan Say's books, but I really love this one because of the illustrations and it reminds me of one of my best backpacking trips and just there's so many cool things we can do with it. So are you ready boys and girls to read The Lost Lake by Alan Say? The Lost Lake by Alan Say. And this was written in 1989. I went to live with Dad last summer. Every day he worked in his room from morning to night. Sometimes on weekends, too. Dad wasn't much of a talker, but when he was busy, he didn't talk at all. I didn't know anybody in the city, so I stayed home most of the time. It was too hot to play outside anyway. In one month, I finished all the books I brought and grew tired of watching TV. One morning, I started cutting pictures out of old magazines just to be doing something. They were pictures of mountains, and rivers, and lakes, and some showed people fishing and canoeing. Looking at them made me feel cool, so I pinned them in my room. Dad didn't notice them for two days. When he did, he looked at them one by one. Nice pictures, he said. Are you angry with me, Dad? 
I asked. Because he saved old magazines for his work. It's all right, Luke, he said. I'm having this place painted soon anyway. He thought I was talking about the marks I'd made on the wall. That Saturday, Dad woke me up early in the morning and told me we were going camping. And there's our word, camping. I was wide awake in a second. He gave me a pair of brand new hiking boots to try out. They were perfect. In the hallway, I saw a big backpack and a knapsack all packed and ready to go. What's in them, Dad? I asked. Later, he said. We have a long drive ahead of us. In the car, I didn't ask many more questions because Dad was so grumpy in the morning. Want a sip? He said, handing me his mug. He'd never let me drink coffee before. It had lots of sugar in it. Where are we going? I finally asked. We're off to the Lost Lake, my lad. How can you lose a lake? No one's found it, that's how. Dad was smiling. Grandpa and I used to go there for a long time ago. It was our special place, so don't tell any of your friends. I'll never tell, I promised. How long are we going to stay there? Five days, maybe a week. We're going to sleep outside for a whole week? That's the idea. Oh, boy. We got to the mountains in the afternoon. It's a bit of a hike to the lake, son, Dad said. I don't mind, I told him. Are there any fish in the lake? I hope so. We'll have to catch our dinner, you know. You didn't bring any food. Of course not. We're going to live like true outdoorsmen. Oh. Dad saw my face and started to laugh. He must have been joking. I didn't think we were going very far anyway because Dad's pack was so heavy I couldn't even lift it. Boy, bears, you are being such great listeners. How many of you have gone camping? Have any of you bears gone camping before? Mrs. Byer, I went camping with my family. We go camping every Sunday. I've gone camping, Mrs. Byer. My dad likes to hike up to the lake in the park. I've never gone camping. I haven't gone camping either. I've gone camping. We went and caught lots of fish with my dad. Did you go camping? All right. Well, dad was like a mountain goat. He went straight up the trail, whistling all the time. I was gasping in no time. My knapsack got very heavy and I started to fall behind. Dad stopped for me often, but he wouldn't let me take off my pack. If I did, he said I'd be too tired to go on. It was almost supper time when we got to the lake. Mrs. Byer, Mrs. Byer, you read that backwards. Oh, I did, didn't I? Sarah, thanks for pointing that out. It does say, if I did, I'd be too tired to go on, he said. And I put the he said in the beginning. Well, Sarah, sometimes teachers make mistakes, too. Will you forgive me? Oh, yes, Miss Byer. Keep reading. Okay. The place reminded me of the park near Dad's apartment. He wasn't whistling or humming anymore. Welcome to the found lake, he muttered from the side of his mouth. What's wrong, Dad? Do you want to camp with all these people around us? I don't mind. Well, I do. Are we going home? Of course not. And he didn't even take off his pack. He just turned and started to walk away. Soon the lake was far out of sight. Then it started to rain. Dad gave me a poncho when it kept me dry, but I wondered where we were going to sleep that night. I wondered what we were going to do for dinner, and I wasn't sure about camping anymore. Miss Byer, Miss Byer, where do you think they're going to go? Where are they going? Oh, I don't know. Should we make a prediction, Sarah? Where do you think they're going to go? I don't know. They're walking in the rain. Maybe they're going to go camp in a cave. Do you bears ever camp in caves? Yeah, I've gone camping in a cave. Bears like to stay in caves. Oh, have you ever camped in a cave? Yep, I was born in a cave. Oh, is it safe to go in a cave without your parents? No way. Didn't you just hear about those boys that were lost in Thailand in the cave? Okay, I'm going to make sure I always have my parents and so... So, boys and girls, where do you think they're going to go? The little boy asks his dad, he, what's wrong? And his dad says, I don't want to camp with all these people around us. And the little boy says, well, we're going home? His dad says, of course not. Didn't even take off his pack. He just turned and started to walk. 
So where do you think he's going to go? Anybody got any ideas? Boys and girls at home, do you have any ideas? Where do you think they're going to go? I'm going to ask you to make a prediction before we turn the page. And that means we're going to think about, we're going to do some um, thinking where we are going to think about what we've learned before in the past, what we know about camping, and think about where might they go. So who's got some ideas? Where might they go? Well, I think, Mrs. Byer that they might go home and go camp out in the backyard. I think they're going to go jump in a pool. I think they're going to go to the beach. Oh, you bears are so silly. They're going to go to another lake. Oh, Elijah Bear, have you heard this story before? What's Elijah Bear doing here anyway, Mrs. Byer? He's in seventh grade. He doesn't even, he's even going into eighth grade. He doesn't need to read this story. Well, Sarah, boys and girls of all ages can enjoy the Lost Lake. I am 50, over 50, and I like the Lost Lake. Children's books are for everybody. Maybe Elijah Bear is going to write a story about a camping trip he took with his family. So there's lots of things to do. But did everybody make a prediction? Why don't you whisper your prediction for what's going to happen in your neighbor's ear? Okay, everybody, turn to your partner and whisper your prediction in their ear. And then if you're a listener, make sure you look at your partner and hear what they say. Then, after they've told you where they think the bears are going to go, or the boy and the father are going to go, you whisper your prediction back. So, baby bear, you said, you think they're going to go to, you're going to say, I think they're going to go home and camp in the backyard. Bear, you say, where do you think they're going to go? I think they're going to go to McDonald's. McDonald's! <laughs> Okay, well, you can think that, too. Did everybody talk to their partner and find out where they're going to go? Well, let's see if our predictions are right. Ready, bears? Let's keep reading. Soon the lake was far out of sight. Then it started to rain. Dad gave me a poncho when it kept me dry, but I wondered where we were going to sleep that night. I wondered what we were going to do for dinner. I wasn't sure about camping anymore. I was glad when Dad finally stopped and set up the tent. The rain and wind beat against it, but we were warm and cozy inside. And Dad had brought food. For dinner, we had salami and dried apricots. Mm, I like salami. Ooh, apricots. Those are good. Okay, bears. Let's talk about... You could talk about what kind of camping food you like. Why don't we do that? So, partner B, this time, it's going to be your turn to talk first. And partner A, you're going to be the listener, and then you're going to listen. So, tell your partner, what did you like to eat when you went camping? My mom brought trail mix. My mom picked huckleberries. Okay, did everybody take a turn and talk to their partner about what food you like to eat when you go camping? Good job, bears. I'm sorry about the lake, Dad, I said. He shook his head. You know something, Luke? There aren't any secret places left in the world anymore. What if we go very far up in the mountains? Maybe we can find our own lake. There are lots of lakes up here, but that one was special. We've got a whole week, Dad. Well, why not? Maybe we'll find a lake that's not on the map. Sure we will, I said. We started early in the morning when the fog cleared. Oops, I made another mistake. I read right through that um, period and then I forgot to put a... Or, and then I stopped at the end of the sentence instead of keep going. Okay, remember we always start with a capital, end with a period, and then take a breath before we start our next sentence. A sentence is a complete thought. It's not just a line on the page. So, we started early in the morning. When the fog cleared, we saw other hikers ahead of us. I still got to read that one more time. I'm just going too fast. Deep breath. Ready? We started early in the morning. When the fog cleared, we saw other hikers ahead of us. Sure enough, Dad became very glum. We're going cross-country, partner, he said. Won't we get lost? A wise man never leaves home without his compass. So we went off the trail. The hills went on and on. The mountains went on and on. It was kind of lonesome. It seemed as if Dad and I were the only people left in the world. Then we hiked into a big forest. At noontime, we stopped by a creek and ate lunch and drank ice-cold water straight from the stream. I threw rocks in the water and fish, like shadows, darted in the pools. Isn't this a good place to camp, Dad? I thought we were looking for our lake. Oh, uh, yeah, right. I mumbled. But look at the fun they're having. The forest went on and on. I don't mean to scare you some, Dad said, but we're in bear country. 
We don't want to surprise them, so we have to make a lot of noise. If they hear us, they'll just go away. What's bear country, Mrs. Buyer? What's bear country? Bear country is um, places where bears habitat and bears live. And lots of people go hiking in places like that, like in Glacier Na National Park, or if they go hiking in our mountains right here, right near Glacier National Park. Um, you just have to be really careful. You should bring some bear spray. You should make sure that there's more than one person around. There's, you know, you should talk to a ranger about what to do when you're in bear country. I'm sure you bears know what it's like to be in bear country and you're pretty safe, but us humans kind of sometimes got to be careful in bear country. What a time to tell me. I started to shout as loudly as I could. Even dad wouldn't be able to beat off bears. I thought about those people having fun back at the lake. I thought about the creek too with all those fish in it. That would have been a fine place to camp. The Lost Lake hadn't been so bad either. How do you think the little boy is feeling right now? Do you think he's being scared or do you think he's feeling brave? I think he's a little bit scared, Mrs. Byer. Well, boys and girls, what I want you to do, bears, is tell your partner what do you think. Do you think the little boy is being scared? And if you do, I want you to tell your partner why you think the bear little boy is scared. If you think the boy is being brave, I want you to tell your partner why you think he's being brave. So, A bear, I think it's your turn to talk. So you're going to tell your partner, do you think the boy is scared? Should we go back and read this page again? Because um, rereading is always a great skill, right? The forest went on and on. I don't mean to scare you, son, dad said. But we're in bear country. We don't want to surprise them, so we'll have to make a lot of noise. If they hear us, they'll just go away. What a time to tell me. I started to shout as loudly as I could. Even Dad wouldn't be able to beat off the bears. I thought about those people having fun back at the lake. I thought about the creek, too, with all those fish in it. That would have been a fine place to camp. The Lost Lake hadn't been so bad, either. Okay, boys and girls and bears, I want you to take a minute and think in your own head what, whether you think the boy is being brave or if you think the boy is being a little bit scared right now. So think in your head what your answer is and get ready to tell your partner. Okay, so partner A, you're going to tell your partner B what you think of the answer. I think he's a little scared because he's yelling and he looks frightened in the picture. Okay, did everybody take a turn? All right, well, I'm going to pull the sharing sticks and call on just three bears, and then we're going to get back to our story. So first sharing stick, Andrew Bear, what did your partner say? I want to know what Puppy said. Were you being a good listener? Did you hear what Puppy said? Yeah, Mrs. Byer, Puppy said that she thought... Um, the little boy looked scared and was starting to yell, but he was being kind of brave. He was still walking with his dad. Um, good job, bear puppy. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what I said. I think he's being scared, but a little bit brave because he's still walking. Okay, next I'm going to pull a stick for Goldilocks bear back here. Goldilocks bear, what did your partner say? Um, my partner... Big Bear said that he thought the little boy was being courageous because he was still walking along and he was just making noise and he kept going. Oh, good job, Goldilocks Bear. Big Bear, is that what you said? Yep, Mrs. Byer, that's what I said. She listened well. Okay, and one last stick. I'm going to pull Black Bear. Black Bear, what did your partner say? My partner was Monkey. And all he did was talk about how much he liked the pictures in the story. But this picture looks scared. Oh, monkey, did you think the boy that that picture looked scary because it was a dark green forest? No, I thought it looked like my home. Black Bear wasn't doing a very good job listening. I said, look, those trees look like my home. They're dark green in the background. Oh, okay, monkey, you're right. Those do. Okay, Black Bear, remember, it helps if you turn and look at your partner so you're a better listener next time, okay? Okay, we're going to keep going and find out what happens at the end of the story. It was dark when we got out of the forest. We built a fire and that made me feel better. Wild animals wouldn't come near a fire. Dad cooked beef stroganoff and it was delicious. 
Later, it was bedtime. The sleeping bag felt wonderful. Dad and I started to count the shooting stars, and then I worried that maybe we weren't going to find our lake. What are you thinking about, Luke? Dad asked. I didn't know you could cook like that, I said. Dad laughed. <laughs> that was only freeze-dried stuff. When we get home, I'll cook you something really special. You know something, Dad? You seem like a different person up here. Better or worse? A lot better. Well, how so? You talk more? We'll have to talk more often then, said his dad. That made me smile. Then I slept. Mrs. Byer, you put some extra words in there again. I know, Sarah. But sometimes when I'm reading a story out loud and the other people can't see the words, I like to make sure that they know somebody's speaking. And remember, we know someone's speaking because the words are in quotation marks. That's called dialogue. Dad shook me awoke. The sun was just coming up, turning everything all gold and orange and yellow. And there was the lake right in front of us. For a long time, we watched the light change on the water, getting brighter and brighter. Dad didn't say a word the whole time. But then, I didn't have anything to say either. After breakfast, we climbed a mountain and saw our lake down below us. There wasn't a sign of people anywhere. It really seemed as if Dad and I were all alone in the world, and I liked it just fine. And that's the end of our book, boys and girls. Did you like the story, The Lost Lake by Alan Say? If you did, I am going to give you a call to action to either go to your library and take the book out of the library, or go to Amazon and buy the book. But most of all, I would like you to go to Amazon and write Alan Say a review and give him five stars because I think this is a five-star book and it's a great book. The illustrations are beautiful. And if you're an older student, I'm going to teach you how you can win a prize um, if you send a uh, copy of your review. Okay. So two, one of the vocabulary words we're going to study in this book is wondered. And when you wonder something, you're not sure what's going to happen. You're curious. You're asking questions. You don't know the answer. Um, and it says, then it started to rain. Dad gave me a poncho and it kept me dry. But I wondered where we were going to sleep that night. So context clues help us figure out what a vocabulary word means um, based on the other words in the sentence around it. So our word is wondered. Dad gave me a poncho and it kept me dry, but I wondered where we were going to sleep that night. So what does the boy want to know? He wants to know where they're going to sleep that night. So, but I wondered where. Is he wandering? They're walking. I walk where we're going to sleep that night. But he doesn't really know, right? He's curious. I wondered what we were going to do for dinner. He doesn't know. So he's asking questions. I questioned what we were going to do for dinner. I questioned where we were going to sleep that night. So I think that's another good way to figure out from the context clues when you can fit another word in there. Um, and so they're not going to walk we are going to do for dinner. So they're not wandering. He's wondering. He's curious. He doesn't know. He wants to know. So he's questioning. Wondered means to question or to be curious about or to not understand something. Wondering. Okay, another vocabulary word in our book that we are going to do this week is glum. Dad became very glum. Sure enough, dad became very glum. Well, sometimes you have to go through the whole context clues in the paragraph. We started out early in the morning. When the fog cleared, we saw other hikers ahead of us. Sure enough, dad became very glum. Um, and what's the dad... What's the dad's feeling? So there's these other people. The dad, they're going on this search for a lake because the dad doesn't want to see people. He wants to go camping somewhere by himself with the little boy. So when he sees these other people, he's probably becoming sad. Sure enough, dad became very sad. Dad became very glum when they see the other people. So glum, sad, unhappy, down. His dad's not glad. He's glum. Today, 
Hey, are we going to read The Lost Link again? No, Ciro. Today, we're going to read another book by the same author. It's also by Alan Say. It's called A River Dream. And today, we're going to do a challenge that's really more for second and third graders, a little bit older, because I noticed that oftentimes my students, when they were in fourth grade this year, had to read two stories and compare them. And they would either have to talk about, a lot of times they would compare the point of view or they would talk about the genre or they would have to just compare the stories. Were they alike or were they different? And so I just, I really like both of these stories by Alan Say. They both go along with our theme of camping or being with family, which are all big themes, I think, of the 4th of July. And so we're going to read A River Dream and then we're going to talk about how to compare Okay, everybody ready? We're going to read the River Dream story. Miss Byer, Miss Byer, I have a question. Can I look at the pictures in the Lost Lake while you're reading? Sure, Andrew Bear, go ahead and look at the book while I'm reading. That's fine. A River Dream by Alan Say. Oh, do you know what that is? That's a fly fishing box. So when you go fly fishing, those are the little flies that you hook. It's like a, a fancy hook that looks like a fly that people catch the fish with. So here's the little boy. He's sitting in his bed. Hmm, what kind of prediction can we make about this story? Do you think this boy is sick or you think he just woke up? He's got a, a package with a letter there he's reading. He's sitting in his bedroom, I think. Anybody got any predictions? Why don't you turn and talk to your partner and make a prediction about do you think the boy is sick or do you think he just woke up in the morning? Okay, everybody turn to your partner. This time, Monkey, I want to make sure you're looking right at Black Bear. And Black Bear, make sure you're listening. Monkey, our question, can you repeat the question back to me? Um, you wanted to know... Let me see, what was the story, the picture? Um, you wanted to know what the boy is having for breakfast? No, <laughs> Monkey, we want to know... We want to make a prediction. Is the boy sick? He's got a letter there. Why is he reading the letter? Do we think he just woke up in the morning? Where is he? He's in his bedroom. Why is he reading the letter? Okay, Mrs. Bear. Black Bear, I think the boy is reading a letter because it just came in the mail and his mom just gave it to him. Why do you think the boy's reading the letter? I think the boy is sick. I think that... He's sitting in bed and it's sunny, so he probably didn't just wake up and the mail at my house doesn't come first thing in the morning, so I think he's homesick and somebody wrote him a care package. Have you ever got a care package, Monkey? I have. I love getting care packages. Okay, did all the bears talk to your partner and did you listen to your partner's answer? Give me a thumbs up if you think the boy just got up in the morning. Give me... Um, a different thumbs up if you think the boy ha is sick and is getting a home letter. Okay, well, remember your prediction and we're going to see what happens. The week that Mark had a high fever, Uncle Scott sent him a metal, small metal box for trout flies. Mark was thrilled to have his uncle's favorite fly box and what's more, it brought back memories of his first fishing trip. It, what's more, it brought back memories of his first fishing trip. Oop, I almost missed that R right in there. Last summer, Uncle Scott had taken him to a secret place on a sparkling river, and Mark had hooked a rainbow trout with a fly. How the little fish had jumped. More than anything else, Mark wanted to show his catch to his mother and father, but the fish got away, and he never caught another. Better luck next time, Uncle Scott had said. When Mark opened the box, he was startled by the cloud of mayflies that rose up from it. As the flies fluttered out the window, he looked outside and rubbed his eyes in wonder. The whole neighborhood had disappeared. A river flowed where the street had been, and a forest spread out as far as he could see. Then he noticed the mayflies hovering out the water, and shiny fish began to leap up after them. Mark rushed outside. He saw a rowboat bobbling in the shallow water. I wonder whose it is, he whispered. He looked all around, but saw no one. But the mayflies had moved down the river with the leaping fish after them. Well, I'm going to borrow this just for a little while, he said, and got into the boat. 
Boy, I don't know if I'd be brave enough to get into a strange boat. As Mark drifted around the first bend in the river, he saw a lone fisherman below him. So when it says a lone fisherman, that means there's just one fisherman. The fisherman is all alone out there. Then, quite near Mark, a fish leapt out of the water, almost splashing him. It was the largest trout he'd ever seen. It had a hook in its mouth. How about that, Mark? shouted the fisherman. Uncle Scott! Mark cried. What are you doing here? Hmm. Funny you should ask, said Uncle, reeling in the fish. I was about to ask you what you were doing in my boat. This is your boat, said Mark. Uncle nodded. Well, I'm glad to see you're feeling better. So did you like the box I sent you? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. But you know what? All the flies flew away. I mean, they were real flies. What magic, Uncle laughed. This certainly thought my fly was real. Wait, what magic, Uncle laughed. This fellow certainly thought my fly was real. Uncle Scott netted the fish, removed the fly from its mouth, and let it swim away. Mark was amazed. Why'd you do that, asked Mark. Why didn't I kill the fish, said Uncle? I like to leave the river the way I found it. It's like cutting trees, Mark. You keep cutting trees, and soon you're going to have bald mountains. Then why do you fish? Just for the fun of it, Uncle replied. Besides, maybe one day I will catch a mermaid. A wise old fisherman said that. But mermaids aren't real, said Mark. Aren't they? Uncle smiled. Hmm. Mayflies began to flit all around them, and rising trout made rings on the water. The magic hour, my boy, said Uncle, climbing into the boat. Do you remember your roll cast? Yeah, like this, Mark nodded, swinging his hand back and forth. So a roll cast must be, when you cast your line out, it's like when you flick it back and then flick it into the water and the line comes running out. So a roll cast must have something to do with the way the little, um, the reel, that part of the fishing pool is called the reel. It must have something to do with that. So do you remember your roll cast? It must be some special um, way to throw the line out that his uncle had taught him. Yeah, like this, Mark nodded, swinging his hand back and forth. Well, this may be your lucky night. Uncle handed Mark the rod. Mark flushed with excitement. He raised the rod tip high until the line hung below his shoulder, just as his uncle had taught him. Then, with a quick chopping stroke, he whipped the rod downward. The line shot out, and the cream-colored fly drifted down in the slick water like a snowflake. Mark took a deep breath. Everybody, take a deep breath. <sighs> wow. Do you think they're going to catch one? Boys and girls, turn to your partner and tell them if you think they're going to catch a great big fish, or if you think they're going to catch an itty bitty fish or if you think they're going to catch something else ready everybody turn to your partner and tell your partner i think they're going to catch a big fish i think they're going to catch a fly i think they're going to catch an old boot i don't think they're going to catch anything i think they're going to catch a giant fish i think they're going to catch a whole pool of little fish I think I wish I was swimming in that river. It looks fun. <laughs> okay, good job, bears. Fine cast, Uncle exclaimed. Now keep your eye on the fly. Remember, you're not going to feel the strike. You're going to see it. So I think when he's talking about that, boys and girls, he means you're not going to feel, not a strike like you're striking somebody out with a bat, but you're going to feel the fish strike or um, grab on the fishing pole, on the fly, on the hook. Um, he says, you're going to feel, you're not going to feel it. You're going to see it. Hmm. When you see a fish, take your fly, raise your rod. He said, does it, my boy. I don't want you to break your line and see how his pole is bending from where the fish is caught. Mark kept his eye on the fly and suddenly the water swelled under it. Then a gaping mouth broke the surface and the fly was gone. Set the hook, uncle shouted. Mark raised the rod, and the rod bent over with some heavy weight. The reel screeched as the line ran out. Sorry. The reel screeched as the line ran out. A large trout leapt in the air. Wow. 
Don't you just love these illustrations? You can almost hear that tail splashing. Look at that giant trout. It's bigger than the one you caught, yelled Mark. Some rainbow, Uncle agreed. Let him run. Keep the rod up. The gray trout put up a mighty fight, running again and again, leaping and twisting, but it could not break the line. When it could fight no more, Mark reeled it in. It barely fitted in Uncle's net. He's beautiful, said Mark. Magnificent, said Uncle, and you are some fisherman. Yes, sir, I know, Mrs. Byer. You said you are instead of your. That's a contraction. When you see your, you are with an apostrophe, you say your. And you're some fisherman, not, and you are some fisherman. Okay, Sarah, my mistake. You're right. You always like to point out the teacher's mistakes. But it's good. I'm glad it means you're listening. You can point out my mistakes all day long, Sarah. Mark sat down to admire his prize. Can I keep it? He asked finally. Kill it, you mean, said Uncle. Well... I want to show it to mom and dad. It's my fish. That it is, said his uncle. You must kill it quickly, though. He opened his knife and gave it to his nephew. Mrs. Fire, Mrs. Fire, you put another word in there. I know, Sarah. I added, it's your fish, though. Or what did I say? Oh, I added, you must kill it quickly, though. My mistake. It just says, you must kill it quickly. He opened his knife and gave it to his nephew. I have to do it, asked Mark. It's your fish, said Uncle, lightening his pipe. How? The boy waved the knife. Give it a quick stab right there. Uncle Scott pointed at the rainbow's head. Mind your hand, it's very sharp. I know, Sarah. I added another word. I don't know why I keep doing that in this story. I think maybe I'm nervous with all you bears listening and all the boys and girls at home. That's okay, Mrs. Byer. It doesn't really change the context of the story, so I think it's probably all right. Everybody knew what you meant. Yeah, sir, quit pointing out Miss and Byer's mistakes. No, it's okay, Black Bear. I want her. I mean, she's listening, like I said. It's all right. Give it a quick stab there, Uncle Scott pointed at the rainbow's head. Mind your hand, it's very sharp. Mark stared at the gasping fish, then at the gleaming blade. I can't look. Close my eyes. I don't want to see if he kills the fish. Oh, poor Sarah. Don't worry. I'll... Look, we have two Sarahs. Uh... Don't worry, it'll be okay. It's a fish that people have to eat sometimes. The knife dropped from Mark's hand with a loud clatter. Then he lifted his catch with both hands and lowered it into the river. The limp fish did not move. Is it dead? asked Mark. It'll be all right, said his uncle. Rock it back and forth and let water go through the gills. So Mark rocked the fish back and forth, back and forth, until the fins began to wave. Then the sleek fish stirred, as though walking, waking from a long sleep. Hmm. I thought that was walking. No, there's no L. Waking from a long sleep. With a flick of its tail, the rainbow slipped out of the boy's hands, and the boy watched his trout swim away. That was fun, he whispered. So what's the use in fishing if you don't keep any fish? Uncle Scott asked. Oh, it's good to live, leave, it's good to leave the river the way I found it, said Mark. Besides, I might catch a mermaid someday. That's my man, Uncle said, laughing. Just for that, I'm going to build you a rod. A rod like yours, shouted Mark. Exactly like mine, with your name on it, said Uncle. Just then, they heard someone talking quite nearby. Sounds like a woman, said Uncle Scott. Maybe that was your mermaid. They looked upstream and saw a house. All the windows were lit except for Mark's. It was still open, and his mother's voice came drifting out of it. I have kept you out long enough, Uncle Scott said, and took the oars. Mark said goodnight to his uncle and climbed into his room through the window. A short while later, when his parents opened the door, Mark pretended to be fast asleep. Leave it to my brother, mother whispered, sending fishing words to a sick child. Why, they're all over the bed. He could have hurt himself. Looks at his father. His temperature seems almost normal. Thank goodness, says mother. And Mark fell asleep. Well, boys and girls, did you like the book A River Dream by Alan Say? I did, Mrs. Byer. That was a great story. Maybe we could read it again. Well, Sarah, 
I'll bet you could maybe read it, or like I said, you can take it out of the library just like the Lost Lake, um, or you can order it on Amazon. But remember, the important part is to leave Alan Say a review telling him whether you like the book or not, because we want him to keep writing more books, right? Hmm.